we have a tremendous amount of new space, uh, which uh, actually gives us capabilities to do a lot of things that we weren't able to do before. For instance, we have now a glove box, which allows us to encapsulate uh, specimens for other kinds of um, exposures that they might get, like for corrosion or for high temperature. Uh, we also have uh, three new um, fume hoods, which allows us to do some chemical and corrosion type studies that we weren't able to do before. Um, also, the new space gives us a lot of new teaching space. We have uh, room for benches and other kinds of things, so we can get a lot of students in there and do things with them where everybody's involved. We'll be able to put our equipment in for testing out our solar arrays, for doing vibration testing of satellites where we shake them, much like they'll see on the trip to orbit. Uh, we'll be able to verify all of the systems and work with the ground stations as well. Uh, having this extra room gives us the ability to also set up a ground operations control center um, named for Steve Nagel, one of our alumni astronauts. The control center will have multiple consoles, large screens, displays, and allow us to work directly with the satellites, allowing the students to serve as the operators and control the satellites directly. It's really important for aerospace engineers to know what a composite material is, how to make complex parts out of, out of composites. So, uh, so that's one of the primary objectives of this new facility. Uh, but at the same time, you know, anyone who needs to make composite parts for some design project or for research, we'll obviously come there too. So it's gonna, it's gonna have a dual purpose. Uh, but the objective is to make sure that none of a student can graduate without really knowing what a composite material is and what are the key techniques that uh, people use to make complex composite parts. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jonathan Friend, Willett Professor and Department Head of Aerospace Engineering. And it is my honor today to welcome you to the grand opening ceremony of our new Talbot Laboratory Annex. On behalf of the Department of Aerospace Engineering and the Department of Nuclear, Plasma, and Radiological Engineering, welcome and thank you for being here today to celebrate with us. You will hear more from NPRE later. Rizwan and I are splitting uh, the welcome and, and, um, and talking. Uh, we are delighted to have you all here today, our campus leaders, uh, Interim Provost uh, uh, Bill Bernhardt, uh, Dean Rashid Bashir, and all of our alumni and friends who are on campus for this to make this all possible. Before we go any further, uh, there are a few individuals that should be recognized. Uh, their legacy of academic excellence will be continued in the work and the research that takes place within this new facility. Without their vision and leadership, we would not be here today. Um, Professor Scott White was a colleague and friend to many of, of us here. He was a visionary researcher in the area of composite materials, especially a pioneer in autonomous materials. He's greatly missed. Steve Nagel, a uh, retired Air Force Colonel and NASA astronaut was a longtime member of the Aerospace Alumni Advisory Board and a general ambassador uh, for the department. Steve was a member of four space shuttle missions, commanding two of them. He received his BS from Aerospace Engineering in 1969. Mike Miller uh, was a double major, receiving BS degrees from Aerospace and uh, Electrical Engineering in 1976. He was a longtime member of the Aerospace Alumni Board and is the current president and managing director of Com Space Development, and he's here today. Uh, Philippe Goubel is executive associate dean of Granger Engineering, and he led, uh, as my predecessor, uh, this project uh, when it was being conceived, planned, and initiated jointly with uh, his counterpart in nuclear engineering. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Interim Provost Bill Bernhardt. As the Interim Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs and Pro Provost, uh, Dr. Bernhardt oversees the campus's academic programs, policies, priorities, which are designed to ensure the quality of the educational experience for our students. Prior to his current position, Dr. Bernhardt was the Executive Vice Provost for Academic Affairs and Associate Provost for Faculty Development, as well as the Interim Executive Associate Dean for the College of Media, and before that, he was head of the Department of Political Science and was an associate in the Center for Advanced Study. 
Uh, in a room, Provost Burnett, please come forward. students, uh, to provide them with the experiences and opportunities uh, to become and take on the next generation of leadership of Illinois engineers. Uh, we're celebrating the potential it has for faculty and staff so that they can continue to be leaders in innovation and discovery. So I look forward to seeing more later on uh, about his, how this very innovative space operates uh, and to learn more about the details of its capabilities. So I want to say uh, thank you uh, once again uh, to everyone involved in pulling this project together. Uh, it is a wonderful achievement and will extend uh, the capabilities of both aerospace and nuclear, uh, as well as the college as a whole, uh, in many exciting and um, in wonderful ways. Uh, it's an excellent uh, uh, example of what we can accomplish when we work together uh, to put, put our students first uh, and continue the let, rich legacy of, of engineering uh, here at the University of Illinois. Congratulations again. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Provost Bernhardt. Our next speaker is Rashid Bashir, Dean of the Granger College of Engineering at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Big surprise at that Urbana-Champaign uh, he's a, also a professor of bioengineering and the Granger Distinguished Chair in Engineering. Dean Bashir has also been the department head of bioengineering and the director of the Holmiak Micro and Nanotechnology Laboratory uh, at the University of Illinois. He was a member of the core founding team and co-chair of the inaugural curriculum committee for the new Carl Illinois College of Medicine. And this is the world's first engineering-based college of medicine, and it's here. Uh, please welcome Dean Bashir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, now we're talking. Good. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. I think this is such an exciting time uh, for everything that's going on um, with our college and our campus. So I really, really appreciate you all being here. Um, my name is Rashid Bashir, those of you who uh, I haven't met and I look forward to meeting um, many of you later today. Uh, I, I'm really humbled and honored to be, to be the Dean of the Granger College of Engineering. Um, uh, this
this celebration is the last, actually, of our five major uh, renovation and building projects that we've had in the Granger College of Engineering through the last year and a half or so, but over the, uh, actually over the last year. Uh, in the fall of 2021, we celebrated the opening of the campus construction facility, uh, the Siebel Center for Design, uh, the Sydney Lou Mechanical Engineering Building, and in the spring of 2022, we celebrated uh, the opening of the Civil and Environmental um, Engineering uh, Building and the, and the new bridge, uh, the, the Kavita and um, Lalit Ball Smart Bridge. And today, we gather here to dedicate the Talbot Laboratory Annex. So our vision for this expansion was to develop a state-of-the-art facility uh, that really is complete with forward-facing educational spaces and instructional labs that really inspire and empower our aerospace engineering department and our nuclear, plasma, and radiological engineering uh, department, the students, faculty, and staff, uh, to be the best in the world at what they do. And these two departments, as I think the department heads know and everyone knows, I'm just so excited about uh, all that's going on across the college, but also these two departments specifically, with a tremendous interest and in all the opportunities of impact in uh, aerospace engineering. I tell John that he can pretty much claim anything that's above the ground all the way up. So there's so much, so much potential, so much impact to be had. And then also with our nuclear plasma and radiological engineering department as really a, being a critical part of the future of sustainable energy, sustainable world. Uh, nuclear is a very important part of, of course, as we know, of the clean and green energy. So we're just so excited about both the departments and all that's going on and such an example, such a great example of this collaboration. Um, I was telling Rizvan and that we just need to get a micronuclear reactor on a spaceship and that's how the two departments are going to collaborate very, very soon. <laughs> it's happening, it's going to happen. Um, while these new student spaces, labs and hands-on equipment offer the resources that our current and future generations of engineers seek, this building represents more than just bricks and mortar. Um, this addition is really a genuine a tangible example of the college's and the campus's commitment to really uh, continue to recruit the best and the brightest to the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, and the state of Illinois. I always say that at the end of the day, this is all about bringing in the best talent. Uh, what, what, uh, what keeps us all awake at night is, is, is how do you bring the best and the most diverse talent to our college and our campus. Uh, the kind of alums that we have had come through in the past and the tremendous impact that they've made, many of them in the audience here, how do we really stay the place which continue to attract them and, and so much more? Uh, this building is a commitment of the investment um, uh, in these very progressive programs, resources, and infrastructure that our students need to continue to lead all of the grand challenges um, in the 21st century uh, and to continue to grow our global research impact uh, and again, to secure our position as a top-ranked uh, engineering college. Um, and again, not for the rankings, but for the impact, for, for all that it has done to touch the world. We wanna continue to do that. And excellent people need excellent facilities and excellent processes. So here is an example of these excellent buildings and facilities that we need to be able for people to do the work. Um, it takes determination, it takes innovation and courage to remain at the forefront to lead the future of science and engineering. Uh, this courage is why we have achieved a lot, and I think we just need to continue to really push that forward. Uh, our programs are more adaptive, have state-of-the-art facilities, our research is bolder, and our legacy is clearly, arguably, um, you know, uh, matchless. Uh, just to give you an idea, those who will utilize and benefit from the Talbot Lab Annex will you know, follow the footsteps of so many great, great, uh, great alums. So Bob, Bob Liebeck, right, world-renowned expert in the field of aerodynamics and aircraft design. Uh, Steve Nagel, his name was mentioned earlier, astronaut and commander of, the of two shuttle missions and for whom the Stephen R. Nagel Mission Operation Control Center is named. Uh, Harold uh, Froelich, member of the Inventor Hall of Fame for designing the deep sea uh, submersible Elvin, which took the first first photos of Titanic in 1986. Uh, Stan Deal, who is the president and CEO of Boeing uh, Commercial Airplanes at Boeing and also a member of the College of Engineering Board of Visitors. Um, NPRE um, um, alumni such as uh, Francisco Veneri, who I actually just met a few weeks ago. He's the founder of Ultra Safe Nuclear Corporation, 
uh, they're going to be our partner um, as we work towards a, a micro reactor demonstration project, uh, which is going to be a collaboration with NPRE um, and many parts of campus to uh, construct and operate a new research micro reactor right here on campus. We have put our stake in the ground and said we want to do this and we'll compete for this. Um, Fai Nguyen, who is retired VP and director of engineering at Intel, K.R. Sridhar, who's founder and chairman and uh, CEO of Bloom Energy, and also a member of the Granger uh, College of Engineering Board of Visitors. So, I mean, there's just tremendous alumni, of course, that have, uh, uh, you know, come this way. Uh, and again, many more that are, that are here. So, I really look forward to seeing what comes uh, next from our AE and NPRE um, uh, students and faculty and staff and how this next generation will use this space to seek their life's purpose to decide how they want to make an impact and really make this world a better place. Um, there are also a few individuals that i like to thank at this time. Um, uh, some of them were speakers and some others. Um, so clearly, uh, thank you, Interim Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs and Provost Bill Bernhard for your leadership to our, uh, uh, to our campus. Uh, Aero Department Head, of course, John Friend. I do want to acknowledge uh, his tremendous leadership uh, over the years, but certainly in the last few years. Uh, he started a little bit after I did. Uh, so I think uh, it's been quite interesting, this journey, and, and seeing this tremendous impact that I think we hope to continue to make together. Uh, NPRE department head, Rizwan. Uh, Rizwan has been there before I joined as a dean, but I've known him for a long time as a faculty member here. Again, thanks, Rizwan, for your leadership to the department, and let's keep pushing things forward. Um, also, the project leads for, for this Talbot Annex, I know it was mentioned earlier, but I want to specifically uh, call out um, uh, the, the former department head, Jim Stubbins. Jim is here. Uh, and also uh, the former department head of Aero, Phil, uh, uh, Philippe Gabel, who has now um, worked very closely with me as an executive associate dean. So thank you both also for your vision to pull this thing together. Um, I also know that there is um, many alumni here and the alumni board for the two departments are here. I want to actually do a shout out and call them. Uh, thank you for your service. Maybe we can ask the, the NPRE board to stand up. I, th I know many of them are here today. Is that okay? Yes, please, thank you. <laughs> thank you for being here. Um, of course, uh, thank you, Debbie. So actually, Debbie is also on the uh, uh, College of Engineering Board of Visitors. Thank you. Um, also, the um, Aero Board is also here today. So maybe I can ask you all to stand up. Just say hello. Great, all right. They had the <laughs> big board meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you for your thank you for your advice, your support, and your and your leadership. Uh, also, want to recognize the family of Steve Nagel, um, including his late wife uh, Linda uh, Linda Godwin. Um, Mike Miller is here, so can you please just maybe stand? Thank you, thanks, Mike, for everything you've done, and your wife. Thank you. Um, for whom the Michael uh, W. Miller Systems Engineering Test Center for Small Satellites is named. Um, and again, many, many other alumni and donors that are here today. So thank you for your continued support to the Granger College of Engineering and our two departments. Uh, your, your commitment, whether it's time or treasure, um, we value them uh, really tremendously. They are just, they're more than just investment in, in, in our education and in our research. They are really a testament to your commitment to us, which is really, really important. So thank you. Uh, and we will, you know, keep us on our toes, to keep giving us advice, all of us, the leadership. We are... Uh, the uh, leadership in academia is really all about service. Uh, and I can say that very confidently that all of our team feels that way. So we are department heads or deans for some period of time or provosts or um, it's really about serving um, the rest of the community, serving our student body and our faculty and our staff and uh, do what we can to make this place better than when we stepped in in those positions. So please keep us on our toes, keep giving us advice and stay engaged with us. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Bashir. Um, thank you very much for those thoughtful comments and the encouragement for what we have been doing. And uh, I was going to thank a lot of people, but since Dean Bashir already did, I would just like to put a ditto under his, his comments and cover everybody who, who he has already covered. So I will move on with the rest of it. Before we conclude the ceremony, there are a few individuals that NPRE would also like to, to acknowledge and thank. And uh, this uh, NPRE department would not be uh, what it is today without uh, these individuals. 
uh, first of, uh, th these are all faculty members. And the first one that I would recognize is late uh, Professor Roy Axford. He was with the department for over 50 years. He was very active in research, graduated more than 50 PhD students. Uh, there's a whole group of his students at Los Alamos, Los Alamos National Lab called, known as Axford Mafia. And uh, uh, he was the most beloved faculty member, professor, teacher in the classroom, uh, a legendary teacher in the classroom with his, with his chalk. And uh, he was one of the most liked persons in the department at the time uh, for, his, for his classroom uh, activities. Second person I would like to recognize is late Professor Barclay Jones. He was with the department from the beginning and served as department head during the 80s and 90s. Uh, 80s time was fine, 90s time was a bit difficult time, and uh, we would not have survived without his support and effort in those difficult times. I'm glad to very see uh, Dr. Allison Jones, his daughter is here. I'm very happy to see, thank you Allison for coming. I wasn't sure if you were coming or not, but uh, thanks for coming. Uh, and um, uh, I would also like to recognize, we would like to recognize from NPRE, Professor Emeritus, George Miley. Uh, I did not see George, maybe he was expecting to come, but he's in town. He is, um, he led the program and then the department through the 70s and 80s and um, an accomplished researcher. At one time, he was the uh, chief editor of four of the top fusion journals in the country, all four of them, and they were all housed in the old NEL building. So uh, he's still an active researcher and comes to campus and works and still has grants. So <laughs> before I go back to the script, I would like to also thank uh, the staff from the uh, from Engineering Hall, uh, on, you know, with Q, uh, Q Kim, uh, they have been extremely supportive throughout the uh, the construction of this of this uh, you know project, and which which is which has been a long journey, okay, and it would not have been possible without them. I would also like to thank uh, Barb and Sarah uh, from uh, from NPRE and Courtney and company from uh, from Arrow for organizing today's event. Thank you very much. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> so as we end this ceremony and proceed to our open house in ribbon cutting, I would like to note that the labs and the spaces are being hosted by faculty and students who will be happy to explain to you the work that will be done in those labs and the impact that they will have. And now to get to our ribbon cutting started, to get our ribbon cutting started, I would like to introduce four very special students who have agreed to hold the ribbon. Uh, to, so I'll start with two from NPRD first. Would Madeline Moraska and Natalie Pansik please stand? So Madeline Moraska is a junior in NPRD. Madeline has been an undergraduate RA for, for sociotechnical risk analysis, Soteria Lab, since her first year. She's a junior now. She joined that group in her first year and is the recipient of the 2021 NPRD Rising Undergraduate Research Award for Excellence in Research and Academics, and 2022-23 American Nuclear Society, by the way, this is a national award, Joe Nazer Undergraduate Scholarship. Madeline, I have your check here. It just came <laughs> this morning, so uh, I can give it to you later. This past summer, Madeline interned with Constellation uh, at Cantera in the BWR Cycle Management Group. She's very active in American Nuclear Society as well as in Women in Nuclear. We have a very active you know, student body. She's the current co-president of UIUC's Women in Nuclear chapter uh, after serving as both outreach secretary and outreach chair and secretary in the past. Thank you, Madeline. <laughs> Next one, at least. Oh, Nat sorry, thank you, Madeline. Did I say Natalie? I was looking at you, so, so uh, thank you. Natalie Pancic is also a junior in NPRE with a minor in political science. So we got something common here. So <laughs> she has been a member of the Advanced Reactors and Fuel Cycles Research Group in NPRE, once again, since her first semester on campus. So as you will notice, we try, we emphasize a lot on getting students involved in research in their you know, early stages in NPRE. It, it helps us, it helps them. She also received the NPRE Rising Undergraduate Research Award in 2021 
She worked for, AN, for Idaho National Lab in summer of 2021, conducting research on microreactor powered steel production and at the Pacific Northwest Lab in summer of 2022, working on nuclear waste modeling. She also earned the, the US Department of Energy's uh, NEUP scholarship in 2022. I think you already got your check. I don't have one. Okay. She is the co-president with Madeline of the um, Women in Nuclear student section at UIUC. She teaches in Engineering 100, a class for first year students. By the way, if I forgot to mention, I think uh, Madeline is also helping out with uh, NPRE 200 as a undergraduate TA. Thank you both. <laughs> and now to the aerospace students, and for aerospace students, would Eric Alpine and Neil Parekh please stand? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Eric, Eric first. Eric Alpine is the graduate. Is the, the graduate student who led for the, who Eric is the graduate student who led the Laboratory for Advanced Space System at Illinois, LASI, flagship uh, darkness, dark matter detection satellite, which is being developed for Fermilab. Is that right? Did I get it right? Okay, thanks. Eric has been at the forefront of formulating the technical and programmatic pro pro processes AE is implementing, aeronautical engineering is implementing for this program. His attention to detail has set the example for students who will follow in his footsteps. Thank you, Eric. And last, Neil Parikh has been an enduring presence in the composites and additive manufacturing lab. His involvement began with supporting the design of the new lab. It pivoted to ensure that existing composite manufacturing capabilities were available for both research and student groups. Uh, after the passing, or passing of his advisor, late Professor Scott Wright, uh, he made uh, sure that these facilities were, were, were accessible during COVID and then were ready to be transitioned into the new facility that we are dedicating today. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> we think it is fitting that four students who represent the best aspects of both departments play a role in today's activities. Thank you, all four of you. Thank you, Eric, Neil, Madeline, and Lassie. On behalf of both departments, I would like to once again thank our university and campus leaders, college leaders, for the support in helping bring this project to fruition. I would also like to thank all the donors who gave so generously to make this possible, all the people in the alumni board, et cetera. The, this project is truly transformative for our departments and will benefit generations of students for many years to come. If you will allow all follow our students to the main entrance of the new facility, we will officially open the Talbot Lab Annex. Thank you very much. Let's follow the leaders or the future leaders. 